welcome you all for the next video on a fissures exact test so we'll be using a fissures exact test for categorical data when uh, you cannot use a chi square test owing to the condition that it's a small sample so for a small sample uh, categorical data where you cannot use chi square test you'll be using fissures exact test now it is a test for signif uh, for significance for the categorical data uh, for a large sample test you'll be using chi square test whereas small samples you'll be using fissures exact test this particular test which we are going to discuss in this video here this particular test is based on use of contingency tables uh, you can say a 2 by 2 uh, contingency table we are going to use uh, for demonstration now let's look into the basis how uh, does it work question is how extreme a particular table of observations are in relation to all possible ones that could have given those same marginal totals given number of association between categories what it means is you are already uh, familiar with the 2 by 2 contingency, contingency table cell values 4 cell values are there they are marginal sums you know keeping the marginal sum constant 4 marginal sums 2 row sums 2 column sums keeping them constant you have got one observation you have got one particular uh, data uh, you can have multiple possible combinations how exactly your combination is rare whether it is a rare or not is the question let us look into the uh, method in detail to understand this particular phenomena so our null hypothesis goes like this you have two classification that is two rows exposed or unexposed or you can say a response plus response minus you are saying that two classifications the response and uh, the exposed variable two major variables what you have uh, they are not different that means there is no relation or association between the two categories they are independent of each other that's what you want to test here so the method goes like this first you have to write down the 2 into 2 contingency table so from the experimental study design you have to convert your data to a 2 into 2 contingency table to illustrate the method i will be taking one 2 into 2 contingency table as a given data so this should be given to you then step number one you will find out whether you can use the fissures exact test or not using this table so as a second step you will enumerate all possible tables contingency tables with the same marginal sum and a step three you'll be computing exact probability for all the tables that you generated here from your contingency table you'll be calculating a cutoff probability that is p value you will calculate then you will calculate the sum of p values uh, based on this cutoff probability and this enumerated uh, tables different tables you will calculate one single p value of your uh, that is called as test statistic the test statistic for uh, features exact test you will be calculating uh, starting from step 1 to step 4 based on that information so this value will compare with the alpha not uh, degrees of freedom or uh, any other value we will have to take alpha value so comparing with alpha you will compare with the p if p is uh, less than alpha or greater than alpha or equal to alpha based on that you will have a rule book which tells you whether to accept or reject H0. So here is a problem. You can uh, go through that problem, read it. Uh, you can pause the video and go through it. All right. Uh, I suppose uh, you have read the problem. Uh, I'm not going to read the problem as it is. Instead, I will be highlighting certain information that's very important for us one it is a retrospective study design or a case control study second information it measures death from cvd cardiovascular disorder they are call, called as cases versus men who died from other case other causes their controls so response is death by cvd death by non-cvd case versus control then of the 35 people who died from cvd five were on high salt diet and uh, another case 25 people who died from other causes two were on uh, high such a diet means high salt diet 
So the exposed variable in the case control study, exposed variable is either high salt diet or low salt diet. So diet becomes the uh, one of the uh, variable that is uh, ex exposed variable. Then uh, response is death by uh, response is death where CVD is the case and control is other process. So let us uh, try to draw one uh, 2 into 2 contingency table defining this. So the type of diet I written the reverse way. Uh, the thing is uh, this is the starting part this is the end part for us because if we start from here we end up here right so your case, uh, cause of death i have written it as non cvd and cvd and the type of diet it is written it's written as high salt and low salt so of the 25 uh, non cvd death here right 25 people who died from other causes of the 25 death two were from high salt so it comes here remaining are 23 it goes to the uh, low salt. Then of the 35 people who died from CVD, of the 35 people who died from CVD, 5 deaths are due to high salt condition and 30 that is remaining 35 minus 5 remaining are due to low salt. Then I can add up the uh, column sum, 2 column sums and the total. So that is how we can prepare the uh, 2 into 2 contingency table from the descriptive numerical, descriptive problem. Now, let us analyze what we have to find. Question is ascertain whether death is related to type of the diet, whether these two variables, type of diet and cause of death, whether they are related or not. That is the question. So, let us define the null hypothesis. No statistical relationship between the death and type of diet. So, the probability of occurrence of this is same for all the cases, whether it is high salt or low salt or whether the death is by CVD or non-CVD case. Alternatively, we will say yes, there exists a relation between two cases. We will take a two tailed case, so that is why probabilities are not equal. Significance level will take alpha is equal to 0 0.05, that is uh, equivalent to saying confidence interval 95 percent. Question number one, that is the step number one, whether Fisher exact test can be used or not. First, you have to find out that if it is not, you are unable to use this, then yes, you cannot go ahead, you should stop at this point. So, you have to prove that you can use Fisher's exact test using this method. What we do? It is very simple. We will prove that our data what we have, it is a small sample size. How do we prove it? There are four cells. There are four cells. Out of the four cells, at least one cell is having an expected value, not the actual value. Please note it. Not the observed value. It is the expected value at least one of the cell is less than 5. In my previous video lecture on uh, a log rank test, I have explained you how to calculate the expected value. That is, take a pivotal cell, one cell you consider, that is cell number 11 for example, it is a row sum 25, it is a column sum 7, take a product of that, that is 25 into 7, I have given you the example here, 25 into 7 divided by the total number 60. So, 25 row sum product uh, column sum is 7 divided by total 60. So, 2.9. So, the expected value of cell number 1, 1 is 2.9 whereas the observed value is 2. So, let us not worry about the observed value now. Let us concentrate on the expected value. So, you see that at least one cell is less than 5. 2.9 is less than 5. At least one cell. It has passed our condition. Right? Just to give you further uh, information this particular cell that is 2 comma 1 second row first column 5 here yeah, this value so 35 into 7 divided by 60 it gives you 4.1 less than 5 then uh, this column it is 22.1 higher than 5 and the last one this uh, d that particular cell it is 30.9 so you see that at least one has got a value less than 5 the test is passed yes you can use the fisher exact test in this case so let us uh, uh, see what how we can enumerate all possible contingency table with a constant marginal sum. Here is a task for you. You can listen to my question first, then pause the video. What you have to do is here I give you one combination that is 2, 23, 5, 30. In this case, the row sum is 25, 35, 7, and 53. What you have to do is you have to fill up this table with any value, but condition is the Row sum should be 25 and 35, column sum should be 7 and 53. This you cannot change. Keeping the marginal sums constant, you have to find a combination. You can have many combinations possible. You can pause the video and 
think about this all right you might have thought about uh, one or two combinations possibly you would have thought that you would have uh, decreased this value by 1 that is instead of 2 you would have written 1 to keep the marginal sum constant 25 minus 1 24 and accordingly uh, to keep this as 7 you have to make it as 6 1 plus 6 is 7 right so you have increased this by 1 you have increased this by 1 and uh, this also automatically in, uh, decreases in order to keep these two constant another extreme condition that you might have thought is this here you have reduced the value of a here you do you just increase the value instead of 2 you would have taken the immediate next value 3 so in order to keep the marginal sum constant these values are put up the same way or anyhow right so these are the two possible many other possibilities you would have thought about so let's look at uh, what are the different possibilities yes there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 possible combinations 8 possible combinations let me tell you one simple trick here before you write the table you can find out how many tables you can write such how many tables you have to, you can write first you have to understand the condition here condition is when you change the number this was our table here is the table this one this particular table see, table number three is our actual problem what you have to do is you have to change the number of or change the frequency of one pivotal cell always let us take one comma one this one a let us change the value of that let us increase uh, start its value from zero first let a is equal to zero then go on increasing its value right you can see a five six seven I increased up to seven here zero to seven I increased it one by one by one frequency when I do that I had to ensure that remaining three cell I had to renumber put in uh, frequencies again reorder the frequencies while I do it I will do this way first I will check for B then I will go for C then I will go for D A B C D in that order I am going that is A is equal to 0 I made it to 1 in order to keep uh, row sum as 25 I decreased the value of B in order to keep the column sum constant I decreased the value of C now automatically I can calculate the D and it obviously it is increased by 1 so you can see that when I increase and decrease combinations here diagonally A D a and D increased by one value the reverse diagonal diagonal B and C decreased by one value so B and C decreases by one value A and D increases by one value when I redo all these things B and C goes on decreasing that you can observe whereas D goes on increasing somewhere I have to stop remember the frequencies cannot be negative so somewhere either B or C becomes zero when which one will get zero first the one which is lower you can see that b is 25 c is 7 right when you start with zero or in simple the row sum is 25 column sum is 7 for the pivotal point 1 1 for the pivotal point 1 here this one case this case let me take for the pivotal point row sum is 25 column sum is 7 the least of the sum is 7 compared to 25 so there are 0 is one value 0 is one uh, frequency plus 7 more frequency totally 8 so I can create 8 tables starting from 0 the, when I go to Z, A equal to 7 C becomes 0 before B B is still more than 0 so I can get only 8 tables so you can identify the number of tables before you start right what is the next step? Step number three, compute exact probability for all the tables. Before we do it for all the tables, let us do it for one particular table. This is the table of our problem. The new, uh, problem depends on this particular table. Let us see what it is. Exact probability is defined as, okay, it's a ratio of uh, um, some probabilities, right? It's a co combinations you have combination of a plus b a plus b is rho sum rho sum combination of a how many combination of a you can be do out of rows how many combinations of uh, uh, c's you can do out of rows right so c plus d to the c 
and it is the A plus C, that is A plus C, the event, right, event that occurs here, uh, A plus C, uh, vertical column that you can take out of uh, N event or uh, the first column, let me say. So, simplifying this, it ends up with a, a ratio of probabilities, right, what are these probabilities, uh, factorials, sorry, not probabilities, factorials. Factorials, if you look at the numerator, just observe it carefully, A plus B, C plus D, a plus C, B plus D, what they are? A plus B, here 25, C plus D, 35, A plus C, 7, B plus D, 53. What does it mean? It means the numerators are factorial of marginal sums. The marginal sum 1, marginal sum 2 rows, marginal sum 1, marginal sum 2 of columns. You take the product on the numerator, look at the denominator. 2 factorial, 23 factorial, 5 factorial, 30 factorial, that is A, B, C, D. This you have to take in the denominator and the total factorial in the denominator, N factorial, 16. So the marginal probability for this particular table is 0 0.252. So it is P of 2, P of 2 is equal to 0 0.252. So I have calculated the exact probability for one particular table, this P of 2 is equal to 0 0.252, right? So what about others? So what you can do is you can I think calculate using this particular formula for P of 0. Similarly, you can calculate for others and come back. You can use the formula as given there. All right. I guess you have uh, solved the problem using this formula and would have computed the probability. Remember, probability cannot be more than 1 cannot be less than 0. It is in between 0 to 1, the probability values, any value that you get here. If at all you get some other value, possibly you would have done some numerical error. Let us find out the values one by one. It is 0 0.017 for P of 0 and likewise you have got other values, right? You can compute them. It is all 0 point values that is in between 0 to 1. So we have computed exact probability for all tables. What next? Based on cut off probability calculate the p-value, that is test statistic p, we have to calculate based on cutoff probability. Cutoff probability is nothing but the probability of that a or particular this particular a, let me define right now, this a is equal to the 1 comma 1 cell, first cell for our problem, for the experimental data that we have obtained. This is our experimental data, for this we have got 2, a is equal to 2. So, I will be using this equation based on this particular combination, particular combination. Let us see how we do it. So, A is equal to 2 based on a contingency table from experimental data. So, the value of A I will be taking based on experimental data, here it is 2. So, I will be using this particular formula for a two-tailed probability, it will be multiplied by 2, right? This so 2 is used for two-tailed probability. If at all you are interested in doing one-tailed probability, then this number will be 1. So, you will be taking 1 here for 1 tailed probability, 2 for 2 tailed probability. Then, you will be multiplying with a minimum of 3 values. You have to compute the 2 values here and minimum of these 3 values you will be considering to multiply with the 2 and this P is your test statistic. How do we calculate this? You will have to sum up all the probabilities below the cutoff probability value and above the cutoff probability. Below the prob cutoff probability is 0 to A. So, that is A is equal to 0 to A, that is 0, 1, 2. So, this particular cutoff probability is inclusive in both the sums. So, it is 0 to A and A to K. A to K means A is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, all this you have to add it. So, there are two things, that is sigma 0 to 2, 0 to 2, we will be adding these three probabilities, it is 0 0.375, remaining uh, that is upper range, this is the lower range, this is the upper range, below the cutoff and above the cutoff, including the cutoff. In both the cases, uh, we have included the cutoff, that is 0 0.252, you can see here, and 0 0.252, it ends here, it starts here. You sum it up and it gives you 0 0.878, 0 0.375, 0 0.878, 0 0.5. Among this, the minimum value is 0 0.375. Multiply that with the 2, you get P is equal to 0 0.75. So, that is the test statistic for this method. Now, going back to our, this is the value I got from calculation of P is equal to 0 0.75.
when we decided we said uh, we'll do for 95 percent confidence interval so we took alpha is equal to 0 0.05 compare this alpha with the p since p is greater than alpha will be accepting the h naught so the rule book says p is if p is greater than alpha accept the h naught if p is less than alpha reject the h naught that is probability the calculated value if it is less than 0 0.05 then you will be rejecting the h naught if this is more than alpha in that case you will be accepting the h naught okay we come to the end of the uh, this particular video lecture let's uh, look at the highlights what you have learned we have used the method for analyzing significance of categorical data for a small sample null hypothesis we consider it uh, there is no association between the two categories so we wrote the two into two contingency table for the experimental data exposed versus response or response versus exposed any order you can write so you get a b c d and marginal sums will be writing you will compute whether uh, features like that test can be uh, used or not based on expected value less than 5 so you will see at least one cell should be less than 5 then you can use the uh, features exact test then you will enumerate all possible contingency table using the constant marginal sum constant marginal sum you will be keeping it constant all possible values will be possible contingency tables will be uh, computing and you know that uh, at least either a plus c or a plus b whichever is lesser than that plus one that many number of tables you will be generating you will have to compute exact probability for all such tables k number of tables are there so k number of exact probability you will be getting using this formula then considering the cutoff uh, uh, table that particular experimental data table you will compute the p value that is test statistic p you will, you will calculate for two tail test you will be using two for one tail test you will be using one you will be cal calculating the minimum of three values that is summation of p for up to cut cutoff probability more than cutoff probability up to the end last table or 0.5 then you will compare the p value with the alpha that is the assumed alpha value then you will either accept or reject the h naught yes that is the end of this video lecture thank you